Geneseo faculty in 1976. Uh, the years before that, three or four years, I worked for the Smithsonian. So I started putting lots of things together. One is, of course, going to the dances in time, videoing some of the dances, talking to people who were playing and dancing. Collected a couple hundred diaries. Young people and old people talking about going to dances, or maybe never going to a dance. They just plowed and did their work, sort of thing. But especially young people that socialized and old people that interacted with the young people socializing. Um, diaries from rural New York. Many of the old quotes I find in the newspapers are mostly young people, sometimes not so young, enjoying a sleigh ride out to some other town. That was what was special about it. And it might be a rather slow ride. It was a big box on a set of bobs um, going through the snow. And, and the majority of the dances in those days were in the winter time when there wasn't that much farm work to do. We got the diaries of Hod Case, where he starts out to a dance with his horse and buggy, and the snow so drifted, he, he puts the buggy in a barn and rides horseback for a while. And then it's still so bad, he fears for the horse, he puts a horse in another barn and walks the rest of the way. <laughs> Let me read a quote from the Delaware Republican, 1870, March 1st. This is a letter to the editor. Competent judges assert that the finest farmhouse in Delaware County has been erected on the Little Delaware during the past season as the property of John Shaw. On Friday evening of last week, about 250 guests assembled there to participate in what is known by the old-fashioned term as a housewarming. The expert musicians, Messrs. Belcher and Wood, having made their appearance, gave the signal for a lively cotillion by tuning up. Mm -hmm. yeah, bum, bum. Cotillion, the old New York word for square dance. New Yorkers liked that word up to the 1870s and 80s when it gradually was replaced by quadrille. And then eventually square dance. But it was the cotillions that came in um, as a kind of informal square dancing. By the 1820s, they required the use of a collar frequently, starting in New England and moving out. And the collar could change things around on the floor while you were doing it. Before then, you memorized the dance. The old contra dances, you didn't need a collar for those things. You did the same one over and over and over again. But the cotillions were these wonderful, sort of more flexible. Quadrille was a little more formal. In time, the, they just got mixed up, um, became square dance. The fiddle can go all night long, no problem. And a good fiddler can call the dancing. Or maybe the second fiddler calls the dancing while the first fiddler plays fancier tunes. And many of you know in Hilt Kelly, dance to Hilt Kelly. drove from Geneseo, Rissian, and Franklinville. I think that's Schoharie County, somewhere up that way. And Hill was one of the, the you know, one of few, Mark Hamilton was another who could play the fiddle and call the, yeah. call the dance. And Hill, in fact, had the voice that really didn't need the microphone. Yeah. Microphones didn't exist at dances before the 1930s. Grant Rogers, from here, from Walton, New York. Fine singer, guitar player. He made it into the folk festival world. Where, where he said, I'm not a folk singer. He was thinking of Burl Ives and Pete Seeger. Those are the folk singers. Well, of course, Grant Rogers was the real thing. They were pop singers that sang folk songs very well. But he played fiddle, too, in a very folky style. He's not a violinist. So we have him playing this tune, Money Musk. <laughs> 